Hi, I'm Chad, and welcome to The Lemon Factor, where we identify the lemons and you determine if it sours you on that next purchase. Today we're going to take a look at this 2019 Mazda Miata RF Grand Touring in Machine Gray. Let's take a look at the pricing for the 2019 Mazda Miata MX-5. This car is in Machine Gray with an Auburn Napa leather interior. What I really like about the new 2016 and current model, uh, also called the ND, is that the front of the car has become much more aggressive with the headlights. Uh, the back of the car, very similar, still has some roundedness to it, but has some edginess that has brought the new generation from what I would call a cutesy look to a little bit more aggressive look, which I like. As you can see, it has the Auburn Napa leather interior. It's very nice. It's, uh, the color of this leather is difficult to describe. Depending on the lighting, it does uh, show as a little bit more brown. The seats are quite comfortable. However, uh, there's no lumbar support, so definitely um, something to consider. I fit comfortably in the seat. I am nearly 5'11". Um, I'd say average build, you know, 180 pounds. Uh, I would be very concerned if you're uh, a robust individual. Uh, definitely try out the seats first uh, to see if they work for you. The 2019, uh, both the soft top and the hard top, it does have the tilt and tel telescoping steering wheel, uh, which definitely helps out a lot. Um, <clears throat> six-speed manual transmission does come in a six-speed, I believe, automatic uh, with sport mode. Uh, as you can see here, this, this model and um, trim level does come with automatic climate control. It has navigation. Um, it does have, as you can see here, the heated seats at the bottom, two USB ports, uh, once again, it does. It is a start-stop functionality. And let's take a look at here the gauges themselves. Um, over to the right, you have the speedometer. Uh, in the center, which any true sports car should have, is that tachometer, which for 2019, the red line has been increased uh, to 7,500 RPMs or, or thereabouts. Um, and then over to your left here, see if I can get that without a glare, um, you have the uh, temperature gauge at the top, and then you have your computer, your odometer, your trip A, trip B. Um, and let me just cycle through that so you can see that. So it's on trip A right now. Here's your trip B. And all I'm doing is pressing the steering wheel uh, info button right here. So we're on trip B. This is your service reminder, and you can set that through the um, communication center here. Uh, we can go in the, into that in a little bit. Um, in addition to the service, we also have um, your gas, how much to, to empty. And then we flip back to the uh, trip A. Underneath that, you have the outside temperature and your, your odometer, which you can see here is uh, this 2019 uh, Mazda Miata RF currently has 140 miles, so not broken in yet. Uh, and then you have the gas gauge at the bottom. Uh, the Miata does call for premium unleaded, so uh, something to consider. Then over here we do have our um, safety, uh, your traction control, and then your lane keep assist. You have your simple buttons for your windows, window lock, door locks, and your side mirrors. As you can see on the sides here, you do have the color, uh, the exterior color wrap around on the in insides. And while this looks really good, at least in my mind, this looks great, and it does that on the other side here. While it looks great, I'd be extremely concerned about scratches and gouges and you know that is a common spot where people come in and grab the door or or leave holding the door and any rings or watches or jewelry or you know just coming and goings um, i'd be concerned about wear on that 
as you see here, there is no glove box. So as tiny as this vehicle is, um, it, it becomes even smaller when you try to store uh, any few belongings that you have. Uh, so no glove box. I'm not sure why that is. The fit and finish inside is very nice. So far, me driving it, there's no squeaks, no rattles. You know, it's not high-end materials, but it's certainly not cheap materials. It, it is mid-grade. As you can see here, you have a different texture and feel, e even amongst these three areas, which is nice. It's a nice added touch. You do have this cubby back here, which is pretty small. Um, not sure what you'd keep it back here besides just paperwork associated with the vehicle, but it is lockable, so that's good. Um, you have your two cup holders. To me, I don't believe the cup holders would be useful back here, but I think it's the way you store them here, and then you remove them, and they pop right in for when you do need them here, which, uh, you know, I, I guess in lieu of not having the cup holder itself, uh, at least it's there, at least it's providing you with an option. If you don't care about it, you, you know, leave it back here. The, the speakers for the stereo, um, come through the headrest here and it sounds pretty good. Pretty good when you have the top up, uh, when the top is down, uh, a little less uh, noticeable. Um, when the top, it, because of the noise, you know, it is a little bit noisy. So let's do that. Let's take a look. Let's take a look at how we put this RF uh, retractable fastback uh, hard top back. So here's the button push up to open it, push down to close it, and it does take approximately 13 seconds, which uh, I guess isn't bad, but if you consider the fact that you can't put it up or down at any speeds over, I believe, six miles per hour, that is a factor. You know, it's, it's next to impossible to be going six miles per hour. If you can go that slow, pretty much just make it stop. So, uh, that, to me, that, that's a concern. If they could bump that up to a lot of modern day convertibles can go up to 30. Um, you know, if you're in traffic on a slower road, it starts raining, that would be great. Instead, for all intents and purposes, you have to stop, you know, the vehicle to put it up. But let's go through that. Uh, so like I said, it's the flip of a switch. You do have to hold the switch. Um, and as it goes up, you can see here, uh, it is giving you a little visual of the progress of it going up and down. And I'm going to do this. There you go. See, what's interesting is when you put the roof down, it does open the windows a little bit. And when it completes the process, it will put the windows back up. But let me show you now when we put the roof back up, it doesn't do that. Um, it doesn't close the windows by themselves. So see, complete, let go of the button. And as you can see over there, that window is still up. So you definitely have to make sure that you put them up yourself. This is like a cockpit in here. It is tiny, it is small, but it wraps around you. It makes it very intimate. Um, you definitely have a feeling of, you know what, you're kind of one with the car. You're, you're not getting into a big boat. You're not you're not being driven by the car itself. It's kind of like you're one with the vehicle. One last thing, uh, a, a concern for your passengers here, you know, talk about lack of room. I don't know if this is being picked up, but you have, yeah, that should, you can see here, there's a big hump here. So the first thing that I notice before I get going is <laughs> very difficult to grab that seat belt. You know, it's not up, hooked up to the, uh, the I believe it's called the B-pillar back here. It's hooked up to the seat, and it's certainly not one of these things that you grab around if you're used to grabbing your uh, seatbelt with your left hand. Um, I think you have to grab it with your right hand and pull it down, but you know what? It's just another one of those things for a small, sporty sports coupe that you're just gonna have to live with. Um, before I get started, I will comment about the steering wheel. While it's a nice steering wheel in its look, it feels okay. The stitching is really nice. It has this red stitching, which actually it's more, it's like a magenta. It's a very interesting color, um, but it's not very robust. 
It's not very, uh, I, I think if it was a little meatier, a little thicker, especially at the 10 and, 10 and 2, uh, that would be a little nicer. But let's get going. One thing that I will point out already um, that I really enjoy and is a surprise given that it is a two liter four cylinder engine is the startup, the exhaust noise, uh, the sound from the exhaust. Uh, it sounds something more substantial than a four cylinder. So let me do that right now. Let me start up the car here. And as you can see, it does have the push button start. So right away, I noticed that it makes all the right noises, right? Uh, the shifter is very smooth. The clutch is very smooth. It's very responsive. It's definitely not quiet per se. A lot of the engine, engine noise, which I guess is what you want from a Miata, it does feel very tiny. It feels like a very tiny, tossable uh, vehicle in a good way, right? Um, almost like you want to play with it. This is not a cruiser. Um, seems like more of a toy. Which, what's interesting is right in the center of the dash here uh, with the tachometer, it does indicate what gear you're in. And apparently as you're driving, if it believes that you're ready to shift, it will give you an indication to shift. It does have the capability to set some user uh, warnings, both visual and audible, uh, meaning that you could set you know, a chime or a, a visual flash to go off if let's say, you're exceeding the speed limit by 5, 10, 15 miles per hour. I do think there's very specific settings that say this is what you can and can't do within these realms. But I think that's interesting. It's probably helpful. Um, personally, I've used that on several vehicles. And, you know, uh, I, I do believe in driving safe. But at the same time, I do like driving my cars. So to have that extra sense of, hey, be cautious, uh, that's nice to have, especially when you're in a sporty car. Let's talk about the transmission. Um, again, very smooth. The shifter, the clutch, it's very nice. Notches between the gate are spaced evenly, spaced nicely. Um, very direct contact going into each gear, gear uh, which is nice. And like I said, that clutch pedal itself, it is not firm. It's not, it's not overly soft, but it is on the softer side itself. The brakes, the brakes are, are nice. They're not, they're not grabby. So these are the standard brakes. Um, but you know, this is a 24 ish hundred pound car and you know, the, the brakes definitely uh, work well. I'd be curious to drive one with the Brembo upgraded package to see if you actually notice it. Definitely freely revs. There's that chime. I had set it um, to give me a warning when I exceed the speed limit. And I don't know if that picked up on the video, but that's nice to say, hey, slow it down a little bit. The suspension seems to be absorbing the bumps uh, pretty well. Um, not noticing an abnormally harsh ride. I will go back to the seats though. It feels like my back itself is kind of sinking into the middle of the seat. So again, without that lumbar support that some people like myself actually kind of rely upon nowadays, uh, that could be a concern. But the seats themselves, it does have support. Um, you know, enough support has the side bolsterings are really nice. Oh, that sounds nice. This engine, the 2.0 liter four cylinder for 2019, did get a bump in horsepower up to 181. I have driven the 2018 where it had the 155 horsepower, um, and I don't know that I found much of a difference um, between the two. You know, the bit, meaning anything under the 
6,000 RPM. It felt very similar. What happens is with this newer engine, i.e. the 2019, the 181 horsepower, it seems to all be in the top end, which is great. You know, who doesn't want to wind out the engine, you know, another thousand or so RPM, uh, especially as the, the way it sounds uh, with this car. And as you do this, you know, I've been driving this around for a little bit um, today. You want to, you want to wind this out. Um, it has that fun factor up in the higher RPMs, but unlike some other sports cars, we're doing so in a suburban area, a rural area, um, could really get you into trouble. It could be, be extremely dangerous. You know, this seems to have the just the right amount of power to be very fun, um, meaning you're not gonna go super fast. This does not have a ton of power. Uh, it is not a, I would not call it a fast car. I'll just come out and say that. I wouldn't call it a fast car. You look at this, some people would probably think that it is. I would, you know, for those of you considering it, go out, test drive it, test drive it again, get the dealer, you know, out of the car, drive it like you would drive it. Um, it is fun, but it is not by any means a, a fast vehicle. From a speed perspective, I don't think it's there. However, however, from a handling perspective, and I, I would assume you upgrade the brakes, you're gonna feel that as well. From a handling, this is a tossable car. It does communicate. You are going to know what it's doing. Um, I'm not gonna push it too far, but I'm gonna say that it's probably one that will will help you learn to be a better driver. Uh, if you're into auto crossing or any type of um, car racing, whether it's circuit or otherwise, if you're, if you're into that, this is probably a great car to learn with that rear wheel drive, um, communicative chassis, great, great um, transmission, you know, this is perfect. And you can definitely build this out. There's a ton of support uh, from the Miata community out there. Um, but yeah, this, this, is a, this is a fun vehicle. This is a fun car. I keep looking down to see how fast I'm going. And again, it's not, not just this drive, but I've been driving it um, for a little while now. And you think you're going faster than you are, which could be a good thing, could be a bad thing. I don't know how you view that. Um, because it's so small, because it's so responsive, because you have that communication in the suspension, um, it just gives a sense of speed, which to me is great in the real world application. Um, doesn't get you in trouble, right? But if you're going to buy this car really to have a, a fast car, straight line uh, on the track or otherwise, probably should look at some other alternatives uh, besides this. It just does not have a ton of torque down low um, and you definitely have to wind it out. I don't know what you can hear as far as wind noise, but I'm at about 40 miles per hour now and you hear it, it's a fun car. But I wanna tell you, you know, a, a big part of the lemon factor is really trying to figure out what's right for you. You know, this is a great sports car. It's sold well. It's been out for what, 30 years. Oh, there's my warning. It's been out for 30 years. It's probably gonna be around for a while. I really don't think it's the, the answer for everybody, right? You have to like the looks, and it's definitely changed in 2016. Become a little bit more aggressive, and maybe that is what some people are looking for, right? Less curvy, less of the rounder look, less of what people, some people call that cutesy look, right? I personally really enjoy this. Um, I like this look. So I appreciate that. But you gotta appreciate the look. Next, you know, you come into the interior and it's really, it's a small car. It is a small car and it could be very intimate, communicative, and it fits like a glove and you take that approach. Or you could say, holy crap, this is too small, it's claustrophobic, the seats aren't comfortable, there's no place to put anything. You know, and I'll, and I'll take a look at the back, 
you know, show you how much uh, luggage room there is. It's deep, but it's not a lot. No glove box in here. The cup holders are back here. Um, very interesting, right? So what are you driving it for? Is it your weekend fun car? Is it your second car? Well, then great. You know, you're, you're probably doing all right. If you're trying to make it your daily commuter and your early car, uh, you might have a problem. You know, if you're looking to have passengers, you got a big hump right to the left leg of the passenger. And while that might be fine with you, your passenger may not appreciate this. Uh, there are nice features. I will tell you that if you are driving it, it does have the lane keep assist. Um, it does have the blind side uh, monitoring system. You know, it comes with automatic climate control, the home link transmitter. If you get the right package, the right, the right trim level, um, got to make sure you get that. It does have the backup camera. However, you know, that's, that's in all cars in 2019. And then we go to the driving. So Miata to me, you want a convertible? Great, there's a lot of different convertibles. Now you have a choice of a soft top, fully you know, manual convertible, or you have this hard top, this RF version. Some people may appreciate that. Maybe you know, it, it does add some degree of sense of security and safety, uh, the hard top that is. So some people might like that. The hard top may make it a little bit quieter. Speaking of quieter, I'm just gonna put this window up here just so you can hear me. A little bit quieter with the top up. Um, and then we talk about driving. So let's talk about the driving itself. This is where this car shines, I think. This car, if you're looking for um, a dynamic driving experience, Excellent shifter, excellent um, clutch. Gears are spaced out nicely. Get, I haven't mentioned it, but gets great gas mileage. You know, city low 20s. Highway, I've already gotten 33 on the highway. Uh, almost 35, I did a mix. Um, so great gas mileage itself. Um, if you're looking for, the, for a car that handles well, great spot on and I bet you, you can make it even uh, better with some aftermarket shocks um, springs coilovers uh, for the braking upgrade braking packages whether it's for the full rotors uh, to the calipers or maybe just some brake pads itself I'll tell you you know the stock performing fine but if you're competitive you know with your vehicles such as in you know autocross you might want to upgrade them i was hoping that that 181 horsepower that bump from 155 would be more noticeable and, and i just don't feel it you know the foot pounds have increased by three foot pounds that's negligible you know the difference here is do you want to wind it out to a higher rpm which absolutely is great you know that's a lot of fun but if you're gonna sit here from a, a dead stop and floor this car um you know it's not going to break any records. Even though I didn't take it out for um, a ride on the highway while videoing, I did do so um, earlier, and it is, there's a lot of wind noise. Uh, is this a car that I would want to go on a multi-hour trip? You know what, it depends. If you're on some back roads and you're on some curvy back roads and you're trying to you know, enjoy the scenery, absolutely, absolutely. If you are not and you're on some uh, straight highways, freeways, um, not much to look at, you know what, I could see where some of the, the wind noise, the tire, the, the, the engine itself, it could become tiresome uh, for your trip. So things to consider. Now let's take a look at the lemon factor chart. So we have several lemons here. It's up to you to determine if uh, these lemons really sour you on the car or if they're no big deal. I put these out there because I think these aspects are very important for you to pay special close attention to when you're considering uh, a Mazda Miata, regardless of the trim. Well, some of these are specific to the, uh, the RF model, but regardless of the trim, go out, test drive the car, get a feeling for it. These lemons that I've pointed out 
pay special close attention and only you can decide whether um, it, they're significant enough to, to sway your decision or sour you on uh, a purchase uh, of a Mazda Miata. I hope this helps. I hope uh, the information provided helps you make a decision. Um, thank you very much for uh, watching this video. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and please leave a comment. Let me know uh, what you'd like to see as far as reviews, um, focus areas, things of that nature. Thanks again. Uh, I'm Chad with The Lemon Factor.